If you like this video, please press the subscribe button to subscribe to this channel and also give it a thumbs up. You can also support this channel with a donation by using the link in the description. Pile 11 splashed down about 900 miles southwest of Hawaii in the North Pacific Ocean at 12.50 p.m. Eastern Time on July 24, 1969. Soaring back in at speed, officer reports reaching 25,000 miles an hour. Let's go to Apollo Control for late word. system is go aboard the spacecraft. That word was communication system is go aboard the spacecraft for reentry. Apollo 11, Houston, we see you getting ready for set. Uh, everything looks mighty fine down here. Thank you, Ron. Thank you. Set, separation of the command module and service module 15 minutes before reentry, 2,000 miles out from Earth. Separation takes place. The astronauts will uh, camp the spacecraft around a bit so that when they use their little reaction control thrusters to pull away from the service module, uh, it's harmlessly out of their way. And the, I think the apprehension, Tom, in mission control is readily apparent now. Though they're hearing good radio signal from Apollo 11 via the Australian tracking stations, uh, part of the fun of the mission for them, part of the uh, History and the climax of it is seeing it on television, uh, live, as it were, courtesy of uh, television, and seeing the actual reentry, if we're lucky, and the splashdown and the recovery of the astronauts. Well, now, sir, here's, here's separation, as we'll see in about uh, a few minutes from now. It should take place with the spacecraft. The service module pulls away on its own. Then the command module is tilted down toward the <coughs> Earth's atmosphere. That actually happens automatically with one of the uh, CMC or the command module computer programs taking over the astronauts back it up manually. We're awaiting confirmation of separation. Jack Riley and Apollo Control, separation should have taken place. Well, we confirm separation now from uh, on the ground readings from telemetry. We can confirm separation. That's one of the three critical parts of the reentry process. The service module is now safely away from Apollo 11. Now it's tilted down, as we see in our animation, to face the searing reentry heat. This Dur during a conversation this morning earlier between Mission Control and Mike Collins and Apollo 11, Mission Control assured uh, the astronauts that the carrier Hornet is on station just far enough, uh, far enough off the target point to keep from being hit. <laughs> they feel very confident about this. Well, if, um, if Apollo 11 is as accurate in its aiming point as Apollo 10 and 8 were, it should be very close. Uh, they landed almost, almost too close. Apollo 11 Houston, uh, you're still looking mighty fine here. Uh, you're clear for landing. Capcom, Ron. Yeah, we appreciate that, Ron. Thanks. Roger, gears down to lock. Roger. For a pilot, that must be a terribly reassuring phrase. You are cleared for landing after coming back from the moon. And at this point, both speeds and heats on the spacecraft are beginning to build up. 800 nautical miles high. Velocity, 33,000 feet per second. They're around seven minutes away from reaching 400,000 feet above the Earth, the really critical point of this reentry, where they encounter maximum speeds and maximum aerodynamic forces and heating effects. Guidance reports Apollo 11 right down the middle of the corridor. Seven minutes away from entry. signs it looks like Apollo 11 will be 
a record-setting closeness, have a record-setting closeness to the Hornet. The actual landing zone, Apollo 11 handy, heading for about 950 miles southwest of Hawaii. Where the Hornet, a 38,000 ton carrier, a tired veteran of World War II, built in 1942, is standing by on station to pick them up. Our, our space down here is our latitude longitude, 1330, 169, 15, that's uh, uh, Hornet right route. This is Neil Armstrong talking directly to the Hornet's flag plot room, telling exactly where he's going to land, a most unusual event. And they are very close to being on the money. We're trying to plot the coordinates Neil was reading off his computer on our uh, one of our charts here. But it looks quite close to the nominal landing area. Hornet shot. report spacecraft right on target point. Okay, Hornet, uh, follow up and there's not. Now about 58 seconds away from landing. Apollo 11 descending through about descending through clouds at about 2,000 feet. That's Neil Armstrong giving the position reports. watching from his vantage point some five decks up on the carrier, standing there with the various VIPs. The men on the Hornet, some 2,200 of them, the crew, they were up as early as 2 o'clock this morning, getting everything ship shape. final preparations for the President, Secretary of State Rogers, Admiral McCain, commander of all the U.S. forces in the Pacific, all here to observe this historic moment. getting word from the swim helicopters, the rescue helicopters, that the crew is in excellent condition. Let's go to them now and see if we can pick up some direct radio communication. The ship is uh, two and a quarter miles from the spacecraft now, and the spacecraft uh, pretty clear now in the picture. The uh, big swimmer, Lieutenant Hattelberg, is using hand signals to uh, communicate with the uh, astronauts inside their spacecraft. He does have a little plastic board with him and a grease pencil which he can write on and flash messages to them that way. Actually, Ron, not much communication is needed between the astronauts. The hatch is now open. We have word uh, from the scene from the recovery helicopter. And the first astronaut is coming out. That would be Buzz Aldrin, wouldn't it, uh, Mellon? I believe so, yes. Band on the deck strikes up. Let's listen to that band up there, sir. Presidents applauding as they play Columbia, the gem of the ocean. Columbia, of course, is uh, that module out there. There goes the first astronaut up in the Billy Pugh net. Up in the Billy Pugh net.
40 feet from the sea to the helicopter door. They have instructions in the helicopter, the two crew members in back, uh, not to touch the astronaut. Dr. Carpentier will, uh, will help the astronaut out of his uh, net. We understand that President Nixon requested that the band play Columbia Jack the Ocean. Written on the bottom of the helicopter is another welcome aboard for the astronauts. It says, Hail Columbia. The other night that helicopter was uh, on the deck and I peeked underneath and they had the old sign from the Apollo 10 uh, recovery saying, hello there, Charlie Brown. But at the last minute they painted the new welcome on saying, hail Columbia. So when the astronaut rides up in the net and looks up, he sees it painted on the bottom of helicopter 66. Here goes the second astronaut up in the net. Down here on the high John Hirosaki, the NASA project engineer uh, who had a lot to do with developing the mobile quarantine facility, has been spending most of his time the last five days inside it, along with Dr. Carpentier. And uh, John Hirosaki is a busy man right now. He's making his very, very final preparations uh, in these final minutes before the astronauts come on board the Hornet. It's been about an hour exactly, Dallas, and splashdown, and one more astronaut to go. So uh, it looks like uh, they've uh, beaten the timetable by about uh, 18 or 19 minutes and uh, are just about uh, doing it in exactly the same time it took during the dress rehearsal the other day. And considering that the spacecraft came down fairly far from the ship, the seas are a bit rough today and they had to go through the decontamination process, that's pretty good time. I'd say it's excellent time. Uh, you know, actually, Ron, I think that they didn't spend as much time on decontamination as they have in some of the uh, simulated recoveries we've watched. It seemed to me it went very fast. We're waiting now for the third and last astronaut to be pulled up to the helicopter. Then they'll come aboard. There won't be that flight deck welcome ceremony with the red carpet. There he goes. Last astronaut going up. There won't be the flight deck welcome ceremony because uh, they've got to go right into quarantine. However, Ron, there will be a ceremony down here on the hangar deck. Uh, the, Marine, uh, the Marines will present military honors. The Navy band uh, will move down here from the flight deck where it is right now. The president uh, will be appearing uh, very soon after the astronauts finish their initial medical uh, inspection so that the uh, routine flight deck ceremony, which has become so familiar over the past few years, will actually be supplanted by something a good deal more spectacular down here on the hangar deck. After all, uh, it, this is the first time in history that the President of the United States has been on board the recovery carrier to greet the returning astronauts. The President has a uh, overhang on that uh, bridge, so he's not getting wet. I believe the president may have moved off the bridge, possibly on his way down. It's only a very short trip. Oh, there he is. He's moved aft, and he's back to the Admiral's Bridge, uh, just outside uh, Flag Plot. Coming in. Land by elevator two for its descent. No baseball caps this time and no handshakes. These astronauts headed for weeks of isolation. Fantastic event. Papa Cadito, Ohio. Land from Montclair, New Jersey. Walk on another planet. seems genuinely moved by this moment. Oh, and here goes helicopter 66 down to the hangar deck where the mobile quarantine facility awaits astronauts Neil Armstrong, Buzz Aldrin, and Mike Collins. And let's get the, the report from the hangar oh, deck the now. Big moment. Number three elevator on the port side is still in the raised position. from my point. It's now down and uh, the tractor 
is being moved back to uh, haul the helicopter off the number two elevator and back here to uh, its position alongside the mobile quarantine facility. Band still playing joyously up on the flight deck. President Nixon is still on the flag bridge. We expect he'll be coming down soon. Here comes the number 66 being hauled inboard from number two elevator very slowly by the tractor. The procedure is for the tractor to uh, pull it straight across the ships and it will then be uh, backed by the uh, tractor. So it's being pulled now with the nose forward in order to move it around in the correct position. There it goes. Now the uh, tail of uh, number 66 is pointing aft along the hangar deck. Astronaut still inside, holding the uh, tail back. Lavalier microphones around their necks, and uh, anything they say will be uh, carried by loudspeaker. Large numbers of sailors behind the lines uh, standing there, uh, waiting to watch this historic moment, the first appearance of the astronauts uh, before any, uh, anybody but the swimmers and the uh, crew of number 66 elephant. Dr. Don, Dr. Don Stalkin, walking along the uh, blue path, is the chief of the NASA recovery team on board. Talking now with John Stone Sarper, the assistant chief. Helicopter being moved slowly back here with the flight crew, the flight deck crew uh, in yellow jerseys. Man up the head about to blow the whistle for it to stop. is just about in position. A few more feet. There it goes. That's it. Dr. Stalkin, Dr. Stone Cypher personally move that flight of wooden steps up to the uh, hatch on the uh, starboard side of the uh, helicopter. Dr. Carpentier slides it open, and here they come. Here they come, the three astronauts, Armstrong, Aldrin, and Collins, waving to the uh, crowd of cheering sailors, moving swiftly into the mobile quarantine facility. There's a wild scene of exultation and joy and mission control as the, they saw, even as you did, astronauts Armstrong, Aldrin, and Collins emerge in good shape from helicopter 66 to enter the mobile quarantine facility. The pent-up emotions of eight years of work to achieve this moment are overflowing. Couldn't have gone Jules, Dallas Townsend is now just, talking uh, to the helicopter from, pilot, uh, uh, the man who was flying uh, number 66 when they picked him up. Let's it was a real team effort, as you know. A lot of people uh, supported us up to the minute of pickup, and uh, it went very, very well. Uh, what was your total time, Don? Gee, I'd have to look at the log sheet, Dallas. I don't know, but I, I feel we're about five or six minutes ahead of our uh, schedule. It just, uh, it just couldn't have gone uh, more smoothly. Chief, Rob, or Chief uh, Wood here did a magnificent job, and Chief Rob Head, who is still locked up in the airplane, yeah. also did well. Chief Wood, uh, did you have a chance to say anything to the astronauts? Did, you, did they say anything to you? No, sir. With the uh, bigs on, they, they couldn't have heard me, and with the headset we were had on, I couldn't hear anything they said. They, their actions indicated they were uh, cheerful uh, all the way through the entire procedure. Was there any sort of message that they conveyed in some way or other to you? No, sir. We didn't We didn't really have time. We were too busy trying to get our gear together to uh, get back on board. Yeah. Uh, Lieutenant Johnson, uh, you probably got a look at them. Uh, you were flying co-pilot. Yes, I was. Uh, I looked back as we got out of the helicopter, and one of them gave me a thumbs up. And that's the only signal I got from them. They sure looked cheerful, though. Glad to get back. Boy, it's a big thrill for me to pick them up, too. Let's... Uh go outside Mission Control now, where ABC's Jim Kincaid is standing by with lunar module pilot Gene Cernan from Apollo 10. How about it? 
Pretty great. Just outstandingly beautiful. It's just unbelievable, but real. Now, you're not entirely unfamiliar with moon flights, so I wonder if there's anything you saw on this one that, uh, that really, really surprised you. No, uh, I, I think uh, I sort of lived the flight with these uh, with these guys uh, through television. I felt like I was in a spacecraft, and uh, having been there, I knew what they were thinking uh, when they were going through. Except, of course, those last uh, last few minutes. And uh, here's another man who's been there, Bill Anders. Bill Anders, I talked to you just the other day, Bill. Uh, what's your first comment? I think it was mighty uh, beautiful flight. Really you know, impressed. it's. It, it's uh, it's more than just an exciting achievement. I, I think it's a it's a real reward and it's a, a real accomplishment of the entire 200 million people in this country. Uh, a lot of people dedicated themselves, dedicated their ambitions and efforts, and it's not the people here at Mission Control. It's not the uh, the three guys who flew it. Uh, it's the culmination of uh, really the the sincere efforts of so many many million Americans, and I think they've got a right to be proud, and I know they all are proud. Now let's go back to the Hornet. And there's uh, Dr. Henry Kissinger, the president's security aide, Tom. Yes, and Secretary of State uh, William Rogers in the and, foreground. And Frank Borman in the background. And so the president obviously must be expected momentarily. And this is a scene we're familiar with, yes. Just before he arrives, usually his aides uh, come first. Bob Halderman, the man with the uh, brush haircut, uh, standing behind Dr. Kissinger. Yes, Secretary of State Rogers chatting with... Someone in the foreground looks like one of the technicians. Here comes the president now, Tom. Uh, through the hatch to the hangar deck. Robert Clarence. Astronauts. The curtains have been drawn, and there they are in the rear, rear window. The president signaling for applause from the crowd. Astronauts gather in the window. Neil, Buzz, and Mike, I want you to know that I think I'm the luckiest man in the world. And I say this not only because I have the honor to be president of the United States, but particularly because I have the privilege of uh, speaking for so many and welcoming you back to Earth. Uh, I can tell you about all the messages we've received in Washington. Over 100 foreign governments, emperors and presidents and prime ministers and kings have sent the most warm messages that we've ever received. They represent over two billion people on this earth, all of them who have had the opportunity through television to see what you have done. And then I also bring you messages from members of the cabinet and members of the Senate and members of the House and the Space Agency, from the streets of San Francisco where people stopped me a few days ago and you all love that city, I know as I do. But most important, I had a telephone call yesterday the toll wasn't, incidentally, as great as the one I made to you fellows on the moon. <laughs> I made that collect, incidentally, in case you didn't know. <laughs> but I called uh, three of, uh, in my view, three of the greatest ladies and most courageous ladies in the whole world today, your wives. And from Jan and Joan and Pat, I bring their love and their congratulations. We think it's just wonderful that they could have participated at least through television in this return. We're only sorry they couldn't be here. And also, I've got to let you in a little secret. I made a date with them. <laughs> uh, I invited them to dinner on, on the 13th of uh, August, right after you come out of quarantine. It will be a state dinner held in Los Angeles. The governors of all the 50 states will be there, the ambassadors, 
others from around the world and in America, and uh, they told me that you would come too. And all I want to know, will you come? We want to honor you then. <laughs> we'll do anything you say, Mr. President. <laughs> uh, anytime. Uh, one question I think that uh, all of us would like to ask, uh, uh, as we saw you bouncing around in that uh, boat out there, I wonder if that wasn't the hardest part of the journey. Was that the only, did, did any of you get seasick? No, we didn't, and it, it was uh, one of the harder parts, but it was one of the most pleasant, we can assure you. Yeah. <laughs> well, I just know that uh, uh, you can sense what we all sense. When you get back now, incidentally, have you been able to follow some of the things that happened when you've gone? Did you know about the All-Star game? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The, uh, Capsule communicators have been giving us uh, they daily news reports. Yeah. Were you American League or National League? I'm a National League man. National I'm not sir. <laughs> yeah, that's right. There's the politician in the group. <laughs> right. <laughs> We're sorry you missed that game. Yes. Well, oh, you knew that too. You really yeah, we heard that. Uh, yeah, the rain. The rain. Right. Well, we haven't learned to control the weather yet, but that's something we can look forward to as tomorrow's challenge. Right. Right. Well, I can only summarize it because I don't want to hold you now. You have so much more to do. And gee, you look great. You feel as good as oh, you look. You feel great. Feel just perfect, Mr. Yeah. President. Yeah. Are you? I understand. Your Frank Borman says you're a little younger by reason of having going into space. Is that right? Do you feel that way? A little younger? We're a lot younger than Frank Borman. <laughs> <laughs> there he is over there. <laughs> Come on over, Frank, so they can see you. And. Are you going to take that lying down? <laughs> <laughs> it looks like he has aged in the last yeah. uh, couple of weeks. Come on, Frank. <laughs> Mr. President, the one thing I want to, you know, we have a, a poet in Mike Collins, and he really gave me a hard time for describing your words of fantastic and beautiful. And you were, I counted them. In three minutes up there, you used four fantastics and two beautifuls. <laughs> <laughs> well, just let me close off with this one thing. I, I was thinking, as, as, as you know, as you came down, and we knew it was a success. And it had only been eight days, just, just a week, a long week. But this is the greatest week in the history of the world since the creation. Because as a result of what happened in this week, the world is bigger, infinitely. And also, as I'm going to find on this trip around the world, and as Secretary Rogers will find as he covers the other countries in Asia, as a result of what you've done, the world's never been closer together before. And we just thank you for that. And I only hope that all of us in government, all of us in America, uh, that as a result of what you've done, we can do our job a little better. We can reach for the stars just as you have reached so far from the stars. We don't want to hold you any longer. Anybody have a, a last word? How about promotions? Do you think we could arrange something? <laughs> Oh, we're just pleased to be back and very honored that you uh, were so kind as to come out here and uh, welcome us back. Yeah. And uh, we look look forward to getting out of this quarantine and, and uh, right. talking without having glass right. between us. Uh, yes, and uh, incidentally, the, the speeches that you have to make at this dinner can be very short. And if you want to say fantastic or beautiful, that's all right with <laughs> us. <laughs> Don't try to think of new, any new adjectives. They've all been said. And now I think, incidentally, that uh, all of us uh, who, the millions that are seeing us on television now, seeing you, uh, would feel as I do that, in a sense, our prayers have been answered. And I think it would be very appropriate if Chaplain Pirto, the chaplain of this ship, were to offer a prayer of thanksgiving. And if he would step up now, Chaplain, thank you. Let us pray. Lord God, our Heavenly Father, our minds are staggered and our spirits exultant with the magnitude and precision of this entire Apollo 11 mission. We have spent the past week in communal anxiety and hope as our astronauts sped through the glories and dangers of the heavens. As we try to understand and analyze the scope of this achievement for human life, our reason is overwhelmed with abounding gratitude and joy, even as we realize the increasing challenges of the future. This magnificent event illustrates anew what man can accomplish when purpose is firm and intent corporate. A man on the moon was promised in this decade, and though some were unconvinced, the reality is with us this morning 
and the persons of astronauts Armstrong, Aldrin, and Collins. We applaud their splendid exploits, and we pour out our thanksgiving for their safe return to us, to their families, to all mankind. Grant us peace, beginning in our own hearts, and a mind attuned with goodwill towards our neighbor. All this we pray as our thanksgiving rings out to thee. In the name of our Lord, amen. Amen.